Hello and welcome to the November edition of Spotlight Tampa. I'm Laura McElroy. Thanks for joining us today. First, our spotlight shines on a new program, teaching kids how to protect the environment and wildlife. The new education center at the Florida Aquarium shows kids how to help keep our oceans safe and clean. Spotlight's Haley Sarasula brings us a sneak peek. I'm here with Lauren Tyler and we're at the Florida Aquarium. Hi Lauren. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Fabulous. And can you tell us a little bit about what's going on today? Sure, today is the grand opening of our new learning center which is the Carol J and Barney Barnett Learning Center. And we have a five fabulous new learning spaces and I'd love to take you on a little tour today. Sure, I'm ready when you are. Okay. Coastal Florida room and in this room we've got the touch tank and what's really nice about this is we can bring different critters um, from the local area. This is a pencil sea urchin and you can see the points almost look like pencils and these are really cool. They're, they're related to sea stars and that's because they're in a family called the echinoderms which means spiny skin. So these are our hermit crabs. A lot of times on the beach you'll find shells um, and you're not sure what's in them. So sometimes they're hermit crabs and sometimes they're different types of snails or, or gastropods um, and uh, the animals that make the shells are usually the snails but sometimes uh, they leave their homes or they've been preyed upon or they've passed away in some way and then hermit crabs use them they're like the ultimate recyclers they come and find a shell that's perfect for them and they move in and use it as shelter so we just drew a lot of fast animals what's the opposite of fast Slow animals. So write the word slow. S L O W. And draw your favorite slow animal. What are some slow animals? What animals are really slow? What's so great about this room is it really is designed for little kids. Um, in the past, we haven't had the capability to even have um, a space just for the little guys. So all the furniture in here is, you know, small for kids. So this room will always have some live animals in here. And so today on the tables, you'll be able to see some of the different live animals um, from our collection. So right now we're in our lab and some of the different things that are going to happen in here of our dissections. Um, we have a very popular squid dissection program and we're designing um, a really cool squid app and we'll have, be able to have a virtual dissection going on while the kids are actually dissecting a squid. So if there's a group that's ahead, they can use um, the dissection that's on an iPad. In this room, the kids during that fun program I was talking about are going to learn about what life is like for sea turtles out in the open ocean. Because once sea turtles um, leave the beach, they swim for the open ocean and they head to a place called the Sargasso Sea. And so the activity that the kids will be doing in this room, and you can see that it's set up on the tables, is looking through um, Sargassum to see what else kind of hangs out in there. particular room is called the green room and you can see because it's it's green everywhere you go <laughs> um, and the focus in this room is conservation um, at the aquarium we do a lot of work on uh, rescue and rehabilitation of sea turtles and so this room the kids are going to focus on how they can help sea turtles help the environment where's the seahorse he's hiding there somewhere he looks a lot like his back is this one right here Good job. Yeah, that's our seahorse. Can you see it? This is his head right here and his body and his tail wrapped around.
the first thing we thought about is what do we need? What do we need to further grow this facility? And one of the big pieces was education. We educate over 100,000 school kids a year, and we just didn't have the space to do it. So we knew immediately we wanted to build an education center. And one of the first groups we talked to were Carol and Barney Barnett of Publix, and they have been so gracious and stepped forward and helped us with this project. And so this, this center is named for them. They were one of the first donors to this overall project, and, and we really appreciate and love them for what they did. The Florida Aquarium is open 363 days a year, only closed on Thanksgiving and Christmas Day, and it's right in downtown. For Spotlight Tampa, I'm Haley Sarasola. The aquarium is always a perfect destination for field trips, birthday parties, or just a day out with the kids. And we want to send out a special thank you to Lauren Tyler and the aquarium for providing such a great place for our children to learn about the environment. Well, it was 100 years ago that the Hillsborough County Extension Service opened its doors. It's been helping residents develop a green thumb ever since. So let's head out to Sefner to celebrate the centennial achievement. All universities engage in research and teaching, but the nation's more than 100 land-grant colleges and universities have a third critical mission, extension. Extension means reaching out, and along with teaching and research, land-grant institutions extend their resources, solving public needs with college or university resources through non-formal, non-credit programs. The University of Florida, together with Florida A&M University, administers the Florida Cooperative Extension Service. The Extension Service was created to take the research and other knowledge created at the, at the land-grant universities and translate it in a, in a way so it could be understood by the general public and deliver that information to the, to the general public. I consider Extension to be one of the first economic development programs uh, in the United States. It was, it was meant to increase the, uh, the capacity of our population to be uh, self-sufficient and for our agriculture industry to expand to the point where today it is known for feeding the world. I believe that our other programs such as uh, uh, nutrition and financial management type programs lend itself well to um, populations in the in the city of Tampa and as we progress we will be directing more of our programs into the uh, the more urban areas uh, of the county and I would encourage you know those uh, the folks in the in the city of Tampa to you know to utilize the knowledge base that we've that we have here at the extension service as we are uh, here to serve not just the citizens of the unincorporated county but the city of Tampa for this celebration of extension's 100th anniversary several current and former employees as well as former customers of extension came and enjoyed in the festivities Well, back in, back in the day, we had three offices, one in, in Plant City, one in Tampa, and one in Ruskin, <clears throat> and I worked out of the Ruskin office. Then later, we were consolidated into one office, and we moved here to Sefner. And I worked in different programs. I worked uh, with 4-H. I was 4-H coordinator for a number of years, and then I worked in consumer education and I worked in the expanded food and nutrition program. Uh, initially, my involvement started with the Future Farmers of America and was involved in their public speaking competitions and Extension was my number one resource for information and was fortunate enough to grow up through uh, the Extension services by just being a student and then joining the University of Florida and being a part of their Three Leg Land Grant Institute and now working for them just worked out really well starting in seventh grade and now into my adult career you know coming full circle well when i was working there it was it was great because we learned a lot 
with how to uh, prepare food and teach people, because that's what I do. I work with families and children on food and nutrition. So uh, I think it's a very great program and it's a very education. I've discovered that it's not just for farmers. I've discovered that there are families where things such as nutrition are important and there are classes that are offered and programs for, for cooking nutritious meals and, and child care, um, taking care of, a, of an elementary aged child and uh, structuring a child's life and dealing with discipline issues and working with schoolwork. There are so many different areas and it's, it's vital. Today, maybe even more than it was back when Virginia worked here for 31 years. This place, I, I tell everybody I talk to, you need to get in touch with the Extension Service. Those people down there know things that you wouldn't dream they knew, and they want to help you. That's what they're there for. I said, they'll welcome you. You just, well, do I have to make an appointment? I said, you don't have to make an appointment. We'll walk right in, uh, tell them what your problem is, and there'll be somebody there that can help you, and they'll give you good, accurate information. I learned a lot about Extension when I first got to be involved with the county and this particular program. I had known a little bit about there being such a place, but I didn't know really what all they do. And I found out that they could help you solve just about any problem that you had. I mean, there would be times when I would have a problem in my yard and I'd say, how do I figure out what to do? And I'd think, aha, uh -huh. call cooperative extension. They'll help me. They'll show me or tell me the right things I need to do. And I learned some really great uh, recipes from some of the people out here. And also uh, we were able to kind of capitalize on some of the other programs that we had at the county and help low-income folks learn how to cook more economically and how to stretch their dinner or their lunches and those were all things that I thought were really meaningful and helpful to the community but also I got a lot of help out of all the things that I learned while I was out here it made a difference in my life well what I would suggest is you come give the extension a visit we're not that far away we're here in Sefner and we've got a wonderful discovery garden here that you can walk around and see all kinds of different plants plants and different landscape ideas and uh, you can talk to some of the agents, uh, ask some questions, get some brochures, great information on how to grow everything from uh, tomatoes to palm trees. And, uh, and I think you would uh, enjoy the visit and uh, certainly by picking up the information, uh, learn what classes are available and, and all of that. It's a great opportunity. Not only does the Extension Service offer help with your landscaping, but it also has great financial programs. Well, you've probably heard baseball referred to as a field of dreams, but Spotlight Tampa's Frank Crum introduces us to a group who believes the baseball field is a place to get kids ready for the game of life. It is a great day to be a Parks and Recreation Director in the City of Tampa. The Kyle Rupkin Senior Foundation in the City of Tampa held a press conference to announce plans to bring a new youth development park to Spring Hill Park Community Center in Sulphur Springs. We just want to give these kids a chance. We work with boys and girls clubs, we work with parks and rec centers, we work with inner city schools, the people who care about these kids. There's so many people who care about these kids and yet they can continue to be left behind. And what we found is when you bring the right group of people together, no matter where you are, you can really change the trajectory of their lives. The Ripken Foundation will work closely with the City of Tampa Parks and Recreation Department to create and offer programs that will address a wide variety of youth development needs. And when the directs are recruiting 14 and 15 year olds and 17th and 12th streets over here are a no man's zone, we need a place like this that these young people can come and be safe and develop their leadership skills. The new baseball field will feature an all-weather, low-maintenance synthetic turf. This is Frank Crum reporting for Spotlight Tampa. 
The Ripken Foundation has helped more than a million kids across the country with its Youth Development Park Initiative and Badges for Baseball programs. The Ripken family created the foundation in memory of its patriarch, Cal Ripken Sr. The future of physical therapy lies in virtual reality, at least at the University of South Florida, where a new rehabilitation system resembles a video game. The Computerized Augmented Rehabilitation Environment System, also known as Karen, is a room-sized piece of medical and engineering equipment. It allows researchers to study more effective ways to help improve mobility and balance in those with prosthetics or limb loss. Hi, I'm Haley Sarasola and I'm on the USF campus at the CART Laboratories, where virtual reality is now a reality. Use of the Karen system uh, is really multimodal and uh, multi-purposed. Karen stands for Computer Assisted Rehabilitation Environment. I was in the Marines, 1960 to 68. Uh, in 1965, I was in Vietnam. I was wounded in Vietnam in a mine explosion and gunfire. The simulator is, is pretty much teaching me balance uh, and shifting my weight from left to right or leaning forward or backwards to pick up speed or reduce speed, which are all really good things, especially for an amputee. It has a six degree of freedom platform as well as a split belt treadmill with instrumented uh, force plates. It also has a 10 camera motion capture system, which is able to track uh, the motion of markers that are placed on a, on a subject. Um, and as well as a, a, a um, virtual reality screen that allows us to change the environments um, and display as somebody is walking on the treadmill. It's great because I can feel the difference in my balance just trying to go around those buoys. It, it definitely sets us apart as a university to say that yes, we are interested in finding new ways to collaborate and pull different departments together to get a 360 view from multiple disciplines to look around real human problems um, and think about ways to improve quality of life for people. We learn from the patients and so if we're all working together for a common goal, um, I think that everything can advance quite a bit faster. USF and USF Health continue to be leaders in new groundbreaking and innovative technology. For Spotlight Tampa, I'm Haley Sarasola. Each Karen operator has completed two levels of training on software, treadmill functions, and environmental interactions. Several graduate students are also learning to use the system with their studies. Tampa police officers are often the first on scene in emergency situations, and those first few moments can mean life or death for cardiac arrest patients. Spotlight's Andrea Davis shows us how the Rotary Club of Tampa is helping officers save lives. First responders raced to nearly 300 cardiac arrest calls last year, and when a heart stops beating, seconds count. Since Tampa police officers are typically the first ones on scene, it makes sense to equip patrol cars with automated external defibrillators. But at $1,000 each, that's a big budget item. That's where the Rotary Club of Tampa steps in. And that... Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. ...is a life-saving sound. To celebrate its centennial, the Rotary Club is raising money for 100 AEDs in Tampa police patrol cars. 
We were looking for some major projects and one of them we selected was purchasing defibrillators for Tampa Police Department vehicles. So we hope to outfit at least 100 cars, but with the support of the community, we hope to raise enough money to uh, have defibrillators and many, many more cars. Recently, the Rotary Club dropped off the first 25 devices and officers received training on when and how to use them. Training Corporal Mike Rivera knows the AEDs will make an impact on cardiac arrest calls. Different places that I've gone within my uh, tour with the Tampa Police Department, um, we've had different calls where I've gone to where it's been cardiac related. And uh, I've done CPR many, many times. And I've never had the luxury of having a, uh, a portable AED machine with me. You'd want one in every police car in a perfect world. That's because the sooner an officer gets to a person, the more likely a life is saved. Every second um, is a second longer that uh, your percentages of surviving go down. The AEDs have voice instructions, making it easy for anyone to follow along. And there's no doubt with the number of cardiac calls officers respond to each year, these will have an impact. It would have probably helped significantly. Um, probably, I'd probably have three or four people that would have been um, saved because of that machine if I would have had it available to me. At the Tampa Police Department training facility, Andrea Davis for Spotlight Tampa. You can be part of this life-saving effort by donating to the program. Just contact the Tampa Rotary Club for more information. Well, stay with us. There's much more Spotlight Tampa to come right after the break. The From the Core News team is hard at work crafting stories designed to encourage Tampa's youth and help them meet their challenges. Every show brings viewers information about events and issues relevant to teens. Providing teens with an avenue for exposure, expression, and self-reflection. Three good reasons why From the Core is worth watching. Be sure to catch From the Core anywhere by going to the City of Tampa YouTube channel and the City of Tampa Television, Verizon Vios Channel 15, and Bright House Networks Channel 615. Welcome back. I'm Laura McElroy. Next, our spotlight shines on an artist who has helped preserve Tampa's history for future generations. Sculptor Stephen Dickey has immortalized in bronze some of Tampa's most notable citizens, living or dead. We recently visited Dickey at his studio to see firsthand how he crafts his lifelike statues. This is, this is clay that has been on other pieces, so it's, it's, it gets reused. It's pretty tough, so we throw in a microwave, and you can soften it to uh, the consistency of wet plaster if you want to. That's perfect. <laughs> that is a pretty soft consistency. Originally, when I went to art school, uh, I thought I would become a painter, and I put a lot of pressure on myself in painting and frustrated myself to no end. Uh, I was taking uh, sculpture as a, an aside, as electives. But because I wasn't so tuned into that, so, so tight with it, it came very easy. As a bronze artist, you work in any material you want to. Wood or plaster, burlap, whatever material gives you the shape and the textures that you want, the artist works in. In the terms of portraiture, you're trying to recreate an image. Uh, I'm not trying to make it a, an exact duplicate uh, the way you would with a, uh, uh, a camera, uh, you know, shooting a photograph. Uh, but there's a sense of, of, of trying, I think, to discover the person and then working around the form. That, part of it becomes relaxing. There's a sense of watching this piece develop, one small thumbprint at a time. As, uh, as, as this finishes up, like I said, we, we'll, we'll, put a, we'll do a rubber mold over this. And from that rubber mold, 
uh, we will pull a wax duplication. So you'll have the whole piece again in wax. When you pour the bronze, your bronze taking the place of the wax will also be a quarter of an inch thick. Anytime you look at a bronze, it's going to be hollow. Even the ancient Greeks and Romans had a process that allowed their bronzes to be very thin and, and hollow. So this is uh, Paulina Pedroso, uh, who was the Cuban uh, and, uh, and, a, and a political activist when she came here to uh, Ybor City. This was the only shot I had of her. What I like best about doing art is, is just being able to express yourself and the expression of what you're feeling and, and maybe what you're observing in terms of society uh, becomes very satisfying. And that is your class of 2013 with Historic Monuments. I've been very lucky uh, in being here at the right time and I'm, I'm able to have some effect on the atmosphere of Tampa in a way that, that, that holds people's interest. It's the pieces that I find important, not me. And, and so for them to like the piece means they've liked something that's part of me and something I was able to create. I'm very appreciative for that. You can spot Stephen Dickey's work all over Tampa. And along the Tampa Riverwalk, you'll find busts of several of Tampa's history makers. For the past 12 years, Mosey has recognized nationally distinguished Hispanic science and engineering professionals to serve as role models and mentors for Tampa Bay's Hispanic youth. As Spotlight's Carrie Poulos reports, this year Mosey recognizes two outstanding scientists. Middle and high school students spent the day at Mosey recently to meet two outstanding scientists. The Museum of Science and Industry hosts Meet the Scientist Day each year as part of the National Hispanic Scientist of the Year Award. Dr. Rafael Brass is Provost and Executive Vice President of Academic Affairs at Georgia Tech. Born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, he came to the United States to study to become a civil engineer and hydrologist. Hopefully I will one inspire them to follow uh, education and follow hopefully STEM or STEAM uh, ideas, uh, science, technology, engineering, arts and math, uh, but education is the most important thing. And I also going to show them a little bit of trick of science uh, and how important it is and maybe they'll come out and learn something today also from me. I'm sure I'll learn some, something from them. This trick of science got the students intrigued as they tried blowing up a balloon with one breath and failed. And then it was Dr. Brass's turn. Okay. Dr. Brass explained the key to this trick, Bernoulli's principle, an example of which is the wing of an airplane. So, what happens? The slow air has more pressure below, the fast air has lo lower pressure above, hence it lifts, it flies, right? The pressure underneath is higher than the pressure above. That concept is called lift, and that's why airplanes fly, and it's based on that same Bernoulli theorem that fills the balloon. I think science is, is really has always been and uh, continues to be science and engineering sort of the stepping stone of mobility, honestly. It pays very, very well. Uh, the jobs in science and engineering are continuously increasing. Uh, in the last uh, 50 years, all economic development or most economic development has been based on science and engineering concepts. And it's predicted that in the future it will be more so. Uh, it is exciting, you know, people say that 25 years from now the rate of discovery in science is going to be 5 to 10 times what we've seen in the last 25 years. Just imagine what that is. Uh, it, it would be like going back and if we were to, for the, our children and grandchildren in 25 years, we're going to look like 1880s look to us. That's a long time ago. <laughs> For the first time, Mosey also honored an early career scientist, 
Dr. Anna Maria Ray. Dr. Ray is a physicist at the University of Colorado Boulder. Originally from Bogota, Colombia, her love of math and science began at age 10. I am a theoretical atomic physicist. Uh, I model the behavior of atoms that are illuminated with light. And I am thinking how to use these systems to create better materials, better clocks, and it's possible a quantum computer. Oh, it's a fantastic opportunity to meet the young generation of students, to tell them a little bit of myself. And well, I, I have never been exposed to such a big audience with such high expectations, so I'm very excited. Dr. Ray has been awarded a 2013 MacArthur Fellowship and a 2013 Presidential Early Career Award. Her advice to students, work hard and be indispensable. The mentoring sessions ended with question and answer sessions from future scientists in the audience, followed by time for the students to meet the scientists, get autographs, and take pictures. For Spotlight Tampa, this is Carrie Poulos. More than 1,200 students from low-income schools attended Meet the Hispanic Scientist Day. Students spend the day with their role models and then get a chance to enjoy Mosey's 450 hands-on exhibits. That wraps up the November edition of Spotlight Tampa. I'm Laura McElroy. For all of us here at CTTV, I hope you have a great day.